delicious. So today I had intended on doing a response video, which is something I haven't done since the Machine Head Song Bastard Slam Poetry Edition that I covered earlier in January, but something else came up. Now as a lot of you might know, with Count Dankula going to prison, something that Mikey Rowlands, that annoying little spastic, likes to throw about with regards to Count Dankula Did you have a nice shower? is a supposed contradiction, the one where Dankula endorsed a petition. Now the petition is what we're going to be addressing, not Michael Rowlands. Do you need me to help you put that on? Sorry, but you're too much of a spastic, even for me. And I know I said Dankula, but I meant... He's Fuckhead McHitler dog. I believe that is the name Angry Ozzy assigned him. And I concur with Bering that we should always address Dankula as Fuckhead McHitler dog. In any case, moving on from that. The petition got a number of signatures, so much so that it got a response from the government. I signed that petition and got one of those email responses and thought, you know what would be a fantastic video addressing how my government goes about assigning labels to groups that do deserve to be labelled a domestic terrorist group, like the FBI calls them. But before we do that, and Remy Millennial, I am still waiting for it. But for now, I have a different one. <clears throat> oh, sandwich wench. One of the great things about this recipe is that you can either do just an open-faced sandwich, or you can make it into more of an actual sandwich. I chose to make a double batch of the biscuits so that I could have a top and a bottom. The biscuits are a baking powder biscuit. I chose to make a baking powder biscuit because they are very moist and they absorb the flavor of whatever you're cooking them with. Make sure you sift all of your dry ingredients together before adding in the shortening. Once you add the shortening, please make sure to cut it using either a pastry knife or a fork. You wanna cut the shortening in until it reaches the consistency of rough cornmeal. Once your mixture has reached the consistency of rough cornmeal, you're going to want to add in your milk. Mix well by adding in a little bit of milk at a time. After the milk has been added, you're going to want to use your hands to mix the rest of it in. Once all of the ingredients have been mixed together, you're going to want to turn it out onto a floured surface. Working the dough by folding it in on itself three to four times. Once the dough is no longer tacky, you're going to want to press it into an ungreased baking sheet until it's about a quarter of an inch thick. Bake it 450 for about 10 minutes unless you like it a little bit crunchy, in which case bake for 12 minutes. And now on to the Salisbury steak. Using your hands, mix in all ingredients except for the bouillon, water, and flour. So you're going to want to make them into small patties. I know that usually Salisbury steaks are very big, but not as many people can enjoy the Salisbury steaks if they're the big ones. Press the patties, or you can wrap them in wax paper and roll them into thin patties. After you've made the patties, fry them up until both sides are nice and crispy. When you flip the patties over, press down so that they don't get too fluffy, keeping the oil in the pan. Once all of the patties have been removed, you're going to want to let the oil sit and cook for a few more minutes before you add in the flour and the bouillon. Once you've added in the flour and bouillon, you want to use a wire whisk to mix in well, making sure that there are no clumps of flour. Yes, this is a flour roux, but that's kind of what makes it so much fun to cook. Don't change the heat settings as you add in the water. Always keep stirring with the whisk as well because you want to blend it in so that it is a nice and thick gravy. Once all of the water has been added, keep stirring until it starts to boil, in which case turn the heat down to low and add in your meat patties. Once all of your meat patties have been added, make sure to cover them up with the gravy. Let simmer until the gravy is bubbling. Remove from heat and start to spoon onto your biscuit. This is how the biscuit should look if you wanted it to be a bit more crunchy. And if you chose to make just an open-faced sandwich, this is where you'd end. However, if you chose to make it like a sandwich, once the meat has been layered, put on your second biscuit. Bake at 450 for five minutes. Take out of the that oven and serve. That looks almost as delicious as the drink I am currently consuming. So now let's move on to the email, because this is going to be rather interesting. I'm going to read the whole thing without interrupting myself to make snide little comments. 
And then I've tried recording that six times now. And every time the cat interrupts when I move my hands, you can all endure that. So let's get on to the email now before the cat continues to interrupt me and I end up skinning it. Dear Omegon, the government has responded to the petition you signed. Prescribe Antifa and other left-wing anarchist groups as domestic terrorists. Government responded. While we keep the list of prescribed organizations under review, we do not routinely comment on whether an organization is or is not under consideration for prescription. Under the Terrorism Act 2000, the Home Secretary may prescribe an organization if she believes it is a concern in terrorism, and it is proportionate to do. For the purpose of the Act, this means that the organization commits or participates in acts of terrorism, prepares for terrorism, promotes or encourages terrorism, including the unlawful glorification of terrorism, or is otherwise concerned in terrorism. Terrorism is defined in the act, means the use or threat which involves serious violence against a person, involves serious damage to property, endangers a person's life and other than that of the person committing the act, creates a serious risk to the health or safety of the public or section of the public. Public, or is designed seriously to interfere with or seriously to disrupt an electronic system. The use or threat of such action must be designed to influence the government or an international governmental organization or to intimidate the public or a section of the public and be undertaken for the purpose of advancing a political, religious, racial, or ideological cause. The government's prevent strategy addresses all forms of terrorism, including that which is inspired by far-left extremism. Preventing terrorism involves challenging extremist and non-violent ideas which are a part of terrorist ideology. In October 2015, we published the first ever counter-extremism strategy to protect our communities from the wider social harms beyond terrorism caused by extremism. Extremists seek to justify behavior that contradicts and undermines our shared values. If left unchallenged, the values that bind our society together start to fall apart. Women's rights are eroded, intolerance and bigotry become normalized. Minorities are targeted and communities become separated from the mainstream. Such behavior cannot and will not go uncontested. The government is taking comprehensive approach to tackling the evil ideology of extremism, whether violent or non-violent, Islamist, far-right or far-left. The counter-extremism strategy has four key pillars. We are vigorously countering extremist ideology, making sure every part of our government is taking action, actively supporting mainstream voices, especially in our faith communities and civil society, disrupting the most harmful extremists using all of our tools available to us and building more cohesive community, by tackling segregation and feelings of alienation which can provide fertile ground for extremist messages. As there are quite a number of pieces of this email I would like to address, let's start with the Terrorism Act of 2000. First of all, let's start with the interpretation. In this act, terrorism means the use or threat of action where the action falls within subsection 2, which is just there. The use or threat is designed to influence the government or to intimidate the public, which is obviously referenced in the email. The use or threat is made for the purpose of advancing political, religious, or ideological causes. Racial as well being mentioned there as a change to the legislation. I wonder if that will at all mention or reference Black Lives Matter in the near future. Or is that only the white people? Not relevant to this video, of course, so we will instead focus on prescription. For the purposes of this act, an organization is prescribed if it is listed in Schedule 2, which I have linked in the description, it operates under the same name as an organization listed in that schedule. Subsection 1b shall not apply in relation to an organization listed in Schedule 2 if its entry is the subject of a note in that schedule. The Secretary of State may, by order, add an organization to Schedule 2, remove an organization from that schedule, amend that schedule in some way. The Secretary of State may exercise his power under subsection 3a in respect of an organization only if he believes that, that it is concerned in terrorism. For the purpose of subsection 4, an organization is concerned in terrorism if it commits or participates in acts of terrorism, prepares for terrorism, promotes, and this was all referenced in the email. So let's have a little look at the schedule. These are the prescribed organizations. The Irish Republican Army, Kuman Na Mban, Fianna Na, and I cannot pronounce foreign, the Red Hand Commando, something else, Aya. The Ulster Freedom Fighters, the Ulster Volunteer Force, the Irish National... I, I see a lot of Irish here. There's more, though. Egyptian Islamic Jihad. So there are some Islamic groups. Hamas. No. Kurdistan Workers' Party. It's a lot of Islamic-related parties. But there is no reference to Antifa, which is quite sad, really. So the next point I want to address 
is the fact that this entire thing doesn't actually give a definitive answer. It merely states that the government is committed to dealing with things, but shows no commitment to dealing with this particular issue. Giving you a blanket statement saying that this system works and we must trust it, all the while ignoring what Antifa does. So perhaps I should insert some video clips here of the uber-tolerant nature of Antifa. I guess the next thing we should look at is the counter-extremism strategy. As this is a 44-page thing, I'm going to leave a link to it in the description for you to read the entirety of it if you so choose to. For now, I want to focus on a few key quotes from it. So yes, I'm cherry-picking. Extremism is the vocal or active opposition to our fundamental values, including democracy, the rule of law, individual liberty, and the mutual respect and tolerance of different faiths and beliefs. We also regard calls for the death of members of our armed forces as extremist. That's a fairly sound definition as far as I'm concerned. Annoyingly though, with Antifa, they're communist. They don't care for democracy. They do not care for individual liberty. And there is no mutual respect or tolerance because they are the ones absolutely abusing those that disagree with them on the grounds that they just won't agree with them or they assign them the label fascist, homophobe, Islamophobe, Nazi, anything they can use as some kind of thought terminating cliche to silence the opponent who in their mind should basically be put to death. They do not value different faiths. They'll claim to want to protect different faiths, but actually what they'll want you to do is convert to their faith, which is, quotes, socialism, all the while unironically wearing a shirt promoting socialism that they bought from Hot Topic. They're champagne socialists. Now there is a little part in this on page 10 that I want to address. We are clear that this strategy will tackle all forms of extremism, violent and non-violent, Islamist and neo-Nazi. Everybody in our country is equal, and everybody is free to lead their lives as they wish. But our society does not just confer rights, it demands responsibilities of us too. You have the freedom to live how you choose to live, but you must also respect the freedom of others to live how they choose to live. That, I believe, is one of the most important reasons why this country is the best in the world to live in. Whether you are Christian or Muslim, Hindu or Sikh, Jewish or of no religion at all. Whether you're black or white, male or female, gay or straight. Which I think is an admirable quote, although it is somewhat transphobic. And non-binary phobic and gender whatever phobic and also Jedi-phobic. But also it's somewhat misleading. You see, it's all well and good telling people that they are free to live their lives how they choose to, but that actually is how people are living their lives which causes divides, if that makes sense. When people come to this country and they don't integrate within our culture, and instead just stay within their own little safe space, and then using their own words and interpretation of their faith to spread hate, now, while a number of these groups that have done this have been decimated, we still have this issue in the country because people aren't being taught tolerance in all communities. And I know you don't want to talk about it, but I'm going to mention it. Islam is not a tolerant culture. There are plenty of people who are Muslim in this country who will say this as well. But of course, that is a complete deviation from the point. Antifa is a living, breathing joke of middle-class kids using their supposed rebellious stage to go out and assault people. You've seen how these idiots acted when they tried to stop Sargon from speaking, and they thought they won because the speech, the chat, sorry, was actually stopped, but he still had the chat. How about those same Nimrods that attacked Jacob Rees Mock? Do you remember that? And what did he do? He just tried to engage you in discussion. All while saying, nah, mate, you're just a fascist, I don't talk to people like you. All the while talking to him. Never has the word genius been used any more sarcastically on people like you. Anyway, to the government. I hope this thing gets 100,000 signatures so you can then, quote, consider it for debate. We know you won't. Much like discussing, much like any idea of discussing Islam, you won't do it because you're cowards. You claim to want to stand for these ideals. Hell, that earlier mentioned quote was the Home Secretary in 2015, which was Theresa May. But she won't discuss it, Antifa. Although I wouldn't be at all surprised if anti-Semitism came up this week in Prime Minister's Questions, which is on to today, I believe. If so, I will be addressing it tomorrow on my second channel, The Cthulhu Kin and Friends Show. I will link it in the description. I think I'm done with this. I'll sort out that response video for Monday or Sunday. One of those two days. Have a lovely day, and thank you all for listening.